Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Aero India 2023 concludes with Surya Kiran Jet's splendid maneuvers. Pakistan's second hand clothing trade shivers under the spell of soaring inflation. And Hindu holy men throng Nepal's Pashupatirath temple ahead of Mahashivratri festival. And now for all the details. The Biennial Aviation and Defence Expo and Air Show Aero India 2023 concluded on Friday in India's southern Bengaluru city with majestic fighter jets performing air manoeuvres. The five-day event also witnessed flying demonstrations from Indian Air Force aircrafts including fighter jet Sukhoi Su 30 MKI and the newly inducted attack light combat helicopter Prachan. Indian flying aerobatics team Surekiran also enthralled the audiences with their demonstrations. The 14th edition of the air show also saw the participation of biggest delegation from the United States with its frontline stealth aircraft F-35 taking up the Indian skies for the first time. During the course of the event, 266 partnerships were forged among different exhibitors and enterprises, including 201 MOUs, 9 product launches and 3 transfers of technology worth around Rs 80,000 crores. It was really great, sir. I mean, watching all of these great aircrafts up close, it's a dream come true. Always wanted to watch Sukhai Su-30, Tejas aircraft and watching them here is very inspiring and I am an aspirant of NDS, so it was very great for me. Moving on, British parliamentarian Bob Blackman has called upon Pakistan to dismantle terrorist bases, particularly those in its illegally occupied territory of Pakistan-administered Kashmir, saying that Islamabad should rather listen to the International Monetary Fund to bring its bad economy back in shape. Blackman, in an interview with news agency ANI, said Pakistan can't just go on appealing to the world for money and support without first putting things right. And its first duty is to dismantle terrorist bases and stop its support to terrorists, he said. Meanwhile, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, in a review published this week, rejected the possibility of revoking the designation of Pakistan-based Hezbollah Mujahideen and the TTP as global terrorist organizations. He said that the circumstances which led to the designations have not changed. Neighboring India has also long accused that Pakistan aids and supports terrorists to spread unrest on its soil, especially in Jammu and Kashmir. However, Islamabad denies the allegations. In Pakistan, I'm afraid their economy is shot to pieces. Uh, and I think my message for, for them is that, look, look, you've got to listen to what the IMF is advising you to do. Um, you've got to bring your economy into, into shape. Um, you know, you can't just go appealing to the world for, for uh, money and support, uh, but you must put things right. And the first duty then is to say, look, where you've got terrorist bases, particularly in the illegally occupied part of Kashmir, um, dismantle, have those terrorist bases dismantled uh, and then restore peace. Soaring inflation and a rise in taxes have hit the domestic budgets of the common public in Pakistan. Several middle-class families are now forced to lower their standard of living as they suffer with pay cuts and skyrocketing prices. A report. With fresh taxes and soaring inflation, misery of people in Pakistan has also risen, with many failing to even afford second-hand clothes. Imran Ali, a 29-year-old technician who was laid off earlier last year, is among those who have been forced to shop for second-hand garments due to a pay cut and skyrocketing inflation. He said the country's current economic conditions have compelled millions like him to bring down their standard of living. 
Our salaries are meager, barely enough to enable us to meet ends, he said. There are a lot of problems in life. Things have become very low because you know that the price is so high. There are a lot of things that we can't afford. It's just that we have to live in life. 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 बहुत से ऐसे चीजें हैं बच्चों के खिलौने हैं वो गए हैं और बहुत सारी ऐसी अशिया हैं जिसमें कमी आ गई है जो कि हम अफोर्ड नहीं कर सकते मुख्तसर सी तनख्वाह है जिसमें बस जिंदगी गुजार रहे हैं हम मैनी ट्रेडर्स इन कराची लंडा बाजार से इन्फ्लेशन हैज हिट दम एज वेल एंड इफ प्राइजेस की प्राइजिंग दे विल बी फोर्स टू शट दे शॉप अभी बस शायद हो सकते हैं अगर ये महंगाई है सब बढ़ता जा रहा है बढ़ता जा रहा है तो ये हो सकते हैं कि हम लोग मजबूर हो गए ये दुकानों छोड़ने में तैयार हो जाएगा फिर छोड़ेगा कारोबार नहीं होगा गाहक लेने वाला नहीं होगा खरीदार नहीं आएगा तो मजबूरन यही होगा कि हम लोग तो कराया कब तक देगा हमारा वस का काम तो नहीं है क्या वो वस का है फिर वस से बाहर होगा फिर हम छोड़ेगा मजबूर होगा इन लेस दैन अ मंथ पाकिस्तान करेंसी हैज लॉस्ट मोर देन अ क्वार्टर ऑफ इट्स वैल्यू अगेंस्ट द यूएस डॉलर pushing up the price of imported goods including second hand garments inflation in pakistan spiked to 27% year on year in january the highest in more than a decade and the government only has foreign reserves to pay for just over 3 weeks of imports the afghan police on friday said they have arrested the former bodyguard of female member of parliament mursal nabizada who was shot to death along with another bodyguard at her home in kabul in january nabizada had been a lawmaker until the taliban seized power in 2021 when many politicians fled the country kabul police spokesperson khalid zadran on twitter confirmed that the police had arrested a former guard who had confessed to the crime but the motive was not clear and investigation is underway the case had raised concern about the security of women and led to calls from diplomats and rights groups for the taliban to ensure former government officials are protected the taliban have said they are focused on making the country secure and encouraging afghans who had left to return People across Sri Lanka have raised their concern over nearly 66% hike in electricity prices by the government in order to persuade the International Monetary Fund to provide a bailout for its crisis-stricken economy. The island nation desperately needs the funds and has been courting multilateral agencies for support. People across Sri Lanka have raised concern over the recent hike in electricity prices by nearly 66% by the government in order to persuade the International Monetary Fund IMF to provide a loan for its crisis-stricken economy. The increase announced by Power and Energy Minister Kanchana Vijayasekhara comes after the government raised electricity prices by 75% last year and adds to the pain of Sri Lankans already struggling with inflation above 54% and income taxes as high as 36%. The government has been working on the IMF. The IMF and Sri Lanka reached a staff level agreement for a loan of 2.9 billion US dollars last September, but the deal comes with conditions that include raising taxes, removing subsidies and cutting public sector debt. The government of President Ranil Vikrame Singhe desperately needs the funds and has been courting multilateral agencies for support since taking office last July. Moving on, India and Nepal on Thursday jointly inaugurated two international suspension bridges in the border area of Tharchula. An official said the bridges will serve as a stepping stone to strengthen bilateral ties and will benefit a population of more than 70,000 people on both sides. They will enhance cross-border connectivity across the Mahakali River where close people-to-people -people links exist between communities on both sides of the border. Due to the lack of any infrastructure, people of both the countries had to travel long distances. The bridges have been built by Nepal at Malaghat and Garbhadar on Lipu Lake Road with Indian grant assistance. A day ahead of the Grand Mahashivaratri festival, the premises of the Pashupatinath temple in Nepal is bearing a new look than the usual. Temple authorities are expecting that more than 2 million pilgrims from Nepal and India will visit the temple on Saturday to celebrate one of the major festivals of the Hindu religion.
Ahead of the Hindu festival of Mahashivratri on Saturday, the famous Pashupatinath temple in Nepal dedicated to Lord Shiva is bearing a new look than the usual. With structures getting fresh coat of paint and decorations, the temple complex is brimming with pilgrims around the clock. Hindu saints or ascetics have also camped in various locations around the temple. According to Pashupati Area Development Trust, Around 2,500 saints will arrive for the festival, while around 2 million pilgrims from Nepal and neighboring India are expected to visit on Mahashivratri. I different. Yes, I यो अहिले को टाइम में जो अन्य बरस को बंदा एकदम फरक देखिए कुछ हाँ अन्य ड्रॉन रोगन हरु भाई रहे कुछ हाँ अन्य साधु संत हरु आउने क्रम आज इपनी जारी नहीं था पहले को तुलना में एकदम धेरे देखिए कुछ अब सिवरात्री बने कुछ अब माय था वो अंसर जे ते सिवा भगवान के नाम माने अब मनाने उटा they Romailo Kulagi and the Avesco history or Ruki, Tapauna Sakinsa, Sadu Santa Rubatapani, Tio Tapauna Kulagi, Ne Aunigori Kutsute. Mahashivratri literally means Night of the Shiva and marks the marriage of Lord Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, to his consort goddess Shakti. It is celebrated on the 14th day of the dark fortnight of month of Mag as per the Hindu lunar calendar. One of the holiest shrines in Hindu religion. Pashupatinath is considered the guardian and protector of the Kathmandu Valley and Nepal. It is thronged by thousands of devotees around the year. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.